Welcome to the Philippines Premier Motor Show. This is Autofocus. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. Here are our features on this edition of your electronic magazine, exclusive to the automobile and its industry. Starting off with reviews of two vehicle models presently in the local market, a subcompact crossover from GAC, the GS3, and a subcompact hatchback from Volkswagen, the Santana GTS. Plus a feature-to-feature -feature comparison of two subcompact SUVs, the Chevrolet Tracker Redline versus Ford Territory Titanium Plus. On Autopedia, we'll talk about what an engine overhaul entails. And together with the latest news and developments in the local auto industry, we shall have the highlights of Honda Club of the Philippines' 21st anniversary as our special feature. The next 60 minutes is all about the automobile. This is Autofocus and we'll be right back after this short break. Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push, to the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition, so you too can race yours. Transcend your business with the Isuzu Travis. Inquire now at any Isuzu dealership near you. Welcome back to Autofocus, the automobile show. We start this edition of your electronic magazine with a review of one of the latest automobile models from GAC. The subcompact crossover is perhaps the fastest growing segment in the local automotive market. This car takes a look at one entry into this crowded market from Chinese car manufacturer GAC Motor, the GAC GS3. Since it joined the local automotive market in 2018, GAC Motor Philippines has quickly grown its local lineup of vehicles to include sedans, MPVs, SUVs, and crossovers. Its entry into the subcompact crossover market is a GAC GS3. At 4,350mm long, 1,825mm wide, and 1,655mm tall, and with a 2,560mm long wheelbase, the GAC GS3 is among the longer, wider, and taller entries in the 5-seater subcompact segment. The GS3 can stand out in a crowd of crossovers with its distinctive grille with the large GAC logo front and center, the Eagle Eye halogen headlamps, the unique rear LED combination lights that outline an infinity symbol when lit, as well as a floating roof design. Soft curves and sharp lines project both a sporty yet elegant persona that should appeal both to the young and youngish. GAC Motor offers three variants of the GS3 at three price points. The entry-level 1.5 Gas AT GS, the mid-level 1.5 AT Premier, and the top-of-the-line 1.3 Gas AT GE. They can be easily distinguished from each other by wheel and tire sizes. The entry-level comes with 16-inch rims and 65-series tires. The mid-level with 17-inch rims and 60-series tires, and the top-of-the-line with 18-inch rims and 55-series tires. The Premier and the 1.3 GE come with LED daytime running lights and front fog lamps. All have power adjustable side mirrors, but only the top of the line 1.3 GE come with power folding as well as defogging and defrosting functions. Also distinguishing the 1.3 GE is the shark fin antenna. The top of the line GS3 comes with smart keyless entry and one button start. All three share the same dark and elegant interior motive, 
with lots of soft touch surfaces in the leather it trim steering wheel. They also share a 6-way adjustable driver seat and 4-way adjustable front passenger seat. Both the two more expensive variants come with multifunction steering wheel. The Premier and the GE get leather and leatherette trim seats while the entry-level GS3 feature fabric upholstery. The mid-level and top-of-the-line GS3 also feature front power windows, automatic air conditioning with negative ion air filter and second-row air vents, sun visors with illuminated vanity mirrors and 12-volt power outlet in the cargo area. Only the top-of-the-line GS3 is equipped with folding center armrests with cup holders on the second-row seat. Only the two top variants feature an 8-inch TFT color screen display for the infotainment, Bluetooth hands-free phone system, rear-row USB port, six speakers, as well as the cruise control. The entry-level GS3 only have your basic AM, FM, and MP3 WMA player with front USB port and four speakers. The 1.5 GS and the 1.5 Premier are powered by a 1,495cc gasoline engine that generates 113 horsepower and 150 Nm of torque. The 1.3G is powered by a 1,325cc turbocharged gasoline engine that generates 136 horsepower and 202 Nm of torque. All variants feature the all-new ISIN 6-speed automatic transmission that sends power to the front wheels, as well as an eco-drive mode to help save fuel. The GS3 also comes standard with front McPherson-type independent suspension, twisting beam suspension in the rear and all-wheel disc brakes, ventilated in front and solid in the rear. It also comes with electric power steering. All GS3 variants offered locally share a lot of safety features as standard. These include dual front airbags, front row seat belts with pretensioners and force limiters, Isofix child safety anchors, second row child safety door lock, impact sensing door unlock. Also standard are passive and active safety features including electronic stability program, anti-lock brake system with electronic brake force distribution, traction control system, hydraulic brake assist, hill start hold control, and hill descent control. Both the Premier and the 1.3G are equipped with front side airbags, but only the top of the line GS3 feature electronic parking brake with auto hold, as well as the tire pressure monitoring system. JZ Motor has not been shy about proclaiming that it is a Chinese manufacturer and distributor of world class vehicles. After all, the Philippines are just one of 26 countries in five major regions of the world where it has established its presence. The latest auto industry news and developments, right after this break. Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push, to the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition, so you too can race yours. Suzuki El Tiga. Seven seater in style. Welcome back to Auto Focus. We now have the latest auto industry news. Nissan Philippines has added the all new Nissan Livina to its local lineup. The Levina is a 7-seater subcompact MPV powered by a 1.5-liter gasoline engine generating 103 horsepower and 141 Nm of torque made into either a 4-speed automatic or 5-speed manual transmission. Nissan is offering the Levina in four variants, the 1.5 EMT, the 1.5 ELAT, the 1.5 VEAT, and the 1.5 VLAT. Prices start at 1.02 million pesos for the base model. The top-of-the-line VLAT is priced at 1,209 million pesos. The Levina comes with a 5-year, 150,000km warranty. For everyone who is listening out there, uh, mom entrepreneurs, uh, couples who are starting, that they want to have a big family, we have the offer of the only Levina. Please, download our app or just 
book a test drive and you will surprise with what you're going to find. Thank you. Toyota Mobility Solutions Philippines Corporation has launched a demonstration project of a mobility service to optimize advertising revenues by specifically measuring the effectiveness of wrap advertisement of fleet vehicles based on vehicle location information using the GPS data sent from the mobile app. The demonstration project is being carried out by TMSPH with Flare Inc., a company that develops and operates mobility-related businesses such as RAP Advertising. Toyota Financial Services Philippines Corporation and Toyota Daihatsu Engineering and Manufacturing Co. Ltd. The project sees TMSPH serving as an advertiser by promoting TFSPH's Kinto One Full Service Lease product. The main objective is to measure effectiveness of advertising using signs on fleet of vehicles moving in the streets. The project will use 10 fleet vehicles throughout Metro Manila, Laguna, and other boarding cities for six months. TMSPH President Christine Arevalo said Toyota is excited to try new technologies and is looking forward to uh, working closely with Flair and testing their system and applications to improve Toyota's internal marketing studies. Suzuki Philippines Inc. is extending its five tastic deals that offer low down payment options and cash discounts for five of its model lineup. The promo was launched in August but is now extended until the end of September. Under the five tastic deals, the XL7 is offered with cash discounts of up to 35,000 pesos or a low down payment price of 140,000 pesos. The carry comes with cash discounts of up to 23,000 pesos and down payments of as low as 82,000 pesos. The Desire comes with cash discounts of up to 60,000 pesos or low down payment of 63,000 pesos. The Espresso is offered with a low down payment of 59,000 pesos and a cash discount of 32,000 pesos. The all-new Salarius offered with a discount of 38,000 pesos or low down payment of 68,000 pesos. Those are the latest news and developments in the automotive industry. We shall take another short break. Stay with us. I'll be right back. Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push, to the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition, so you too can race yours. Kay naghahanap ng truck na game sumabak Travis ang asahan sa maraming haputan Kayang Cargo 1,660 Kayang Cargo No problem sa delivery yeah. Kayang Cargo 1,660 Kayang Cargo No problem sa delivery Travis Ta-ta-ta-ta Travis Ta-ta-ta-ta Travis Ta-ta-ta-ta Travis Ta-ta-ta-ta Travis Ta-ta-ta-ta Travis Ta-ta-ta-ta Travis Transcend your business with the Isuzu Travis Inquire now at any Isuzu dealership near you Welcome back to Autofocus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Here's our comparison of the latest automobile malls belonging to the same category on Head to Head. This edition of Head to Head pits two American brand crossover SUVs the Chevy Tracker Red Line, and the Ford Territory Titanium Plus CBT in a spec-to-spec compare. For decades now, Chevrolet and Ford have been going head-to-head -head for dominance in the U.S. and in the global market. The fight has taken place through the years as automotive tastes and preferences for models and vehicle types shifted. From wagons to pickups, sports and muscle cars, mom mobiles to vans, and lately to the current global preference for SUVs and crossovers. In the crowded local SUV crossover market, the two American brands offer the Chevy Tracker and the Ford Territory. The smallest crossover SUV in the Chevrolet Philippines lineup, the Chevy Tracker, is 4,270mm long, 
1791 millimeters wide and 1627 millimeters tall with a 2570 millimeter long wheelbase and a minimum ground clearance of 161 millimeters the ford territory is 4580 millimeters long 1936 millimeters wide and 1674 millimeters at its highest point with a 180 millimeters ground clearance the Chevy Tracker is offered in two trim levels, the LS Entry Level model and the top of the line LT Red Line. The LT Red Line comes with red exterior accents and trim on the wide horizontal beam, on front double grills with the black Chevy bow tie, and on the gloss black side mirrors and 17 inch black alloy wheels with red accents. The most distinguishable feature of the Red Line is the electric sliding panoramic sunroof. Other exterior highlights of the Tracker Red include LED projector headlamps with manual leveling and auto on off function. Daytime running lights that double as turn indicators, side mirrors and power adjust and heater function, as well as integrated turn signals, LED tail lamps, black D pillars, lower body molding, rear fog lamps, rear spoiler, high mount stop lamp, and roof antenna. Ford also rolled the territory in various trim levels. The territory titanium plus CVT features all LED headlamps, front and rear fog lamps, tail lamps, power adjustable, power folding, heated side mirrors with integrated turn lights chrome door handles, shark fin antenna, rear spoiler, roof rails, 18-inch alloy wheels wrapped by 235-50R18 tires, and a panoramic sunroof. Chevrolet equipped the Tracker Redline with many of the modern conveniences expected in top-of-the-line models, including a passive entry system and push-start button. Inside the Tracker Redline, one finds an all-black interior with jet black faux leather seats with red double stitching. The driver's seat can be adjusted six ways with a unique combination of power and manual system. The front passenger seat adjusts four ways. The back row seat for three splits and folds 60-40 and features retractable headrests. The redline dash features what Chevy calls the dual barrel sports instrument panel with color driver information console. It also comes with a leather-wrapped D-shaped steering wheel with audio controls. Other comfort and convenience features include automatic climate control, AC cabin pollen filter, power windows, and rear window defogger. The Ford Territory Titanium Plus is also equipped with smart keyless entry with push-button start. Inside one finds seats in perforated leather, soft-touch door panels and trim, center console and leather-wrapped steering wheel that tilts and telescopes. The front seats are ventilated for cold and heat. The driver's seat power adjusts 10 ways. The front passenger seat adjusts 4 ways manually. The rear seat back splits and folds 60-40. The dash features a 10-inch display for the fully digital instrument cluster with three interchangeable design themes. Comfort and convenience features include power window, speed sensing, central door locks, automatic air conditioning, 7 cup and bottle holders, auxiliary 12 volt outlet, as well as a cabin filter. The Tracker Redline Infotainment System features a floating 8 inch color touchscreen display with the latest version of the Chevrolet MyLink Infotainment System with Apple CarPlay and Bluetooth, a tuner, video, and 6 speakers. The Ford Territory Titanium Plus Infotainment System features a 10 inch touchscreen with adjustable quad view, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, 3 USB ports for charging and 1 for data, wireless charging, and 8 speakers. The Chevrolet Tracker is powered by a lightweight, new generation 1.0 liter 3 cylinder DOHC Ecotec turbo engine that generates 116 horsepower and 5,800 RPM and 175 Nm of torque at 1,500 to 4,200 RPM. A 6 speed automatic transmission delivers power and torque to the front wheels. The suspension features McPherson struts in front and compound cranked rear axle system in the rear. Stopping power comes from all wheel disc brake system, ventilated in front and solid in the rear. The Territory Titanium Plus is powered by a 1,490cc 4-cylinder inline EcoBoost gasoline engine that generates 143 PS and 225 Nm of torque. The engine is made to a continuously variable transmission with sport mode that drives the front wheels. The Ford Territory suspension uses front McPherson struts and rear multi-link system. The brake system features front vented and rear solid discs. Chevy equipped the Tracker Redline with active and passive safety technologies that include anti-lock braking system, electronic stability control, emergency brake warning, rollover mitigation, enhanced understeer control, cornering brake control, traction control system, engine drag control, panic brake assist, hill start assist, low vacuum brake assist, no vacuum brake assist, fading brake assist, torque vectoring brakes, engine immobilizer, anti-theft alert system, and tire pressure monitoring system. Added for safety are front passenger and side airbag, isofix system. 5 3.0 seat belts with indicators and the driver and front passenger benefiting from force limiters. 
Parking is made more safe and convenient with a reverse camera with a wide 130 degree viewing angle and rear sensors. Ford equipped with Territory Titanium Plus with advanced driver assist technologies that includes anti lock brake system with electronic brake force distribution, auto brake hold function, traction control, and launch assist. Adaptive cruise control with forward collision warning, lane departure warning, and blind spot information system that uses high definition 360 degree cameras and parking sensors in front and back, as well as enhanced active park assist system that allows the car to park itself. Added for safety are 3 point ELR seat belts for 5, with the driver and front seat passenger getting free tensioners, child seat isofix anchorage points, and 6 airbags. Aside from style and engineering, the Tracker and the Territory offer much in terms of modern technology for safety, comfort, and convenience. The Tracker LT Redline is listed at 1.242 million pesos. The Territory Titanium at 1.310 million pesos. So which would you rather? Be it fine dining, a romantic garden wedding, a relaxed casual meal, or an important business event, Illustrado is the place to go. Aside from its famed paella, the Illustrado restaurant, which is located within the history-laden walled city of Intramuros, is also the favorite destination of food gourmands for its famous calios and lengua and other classic gustatory offerings. Illustrado restaurant, only for the foodies. Who said happiness can only be found on the ground? Next generation Ford Ranger. Do the undone. Reserve yours now on Ford.com.ph or at your nearest Ford dealer. Welcome back to Autofocus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Our special feature is next. Honda Car Club Philippines celebrated its 21st anniversary by holding what it's called the Honda Matsuri All Honda Car Show. This special feature is all about the highlights of what club members all the Honda collected. We're celebrating the Honda Matsuri All Honda Car Show. This is a 21st anniversary car show of uh, Honda Club of the Philippines. Matsuri is the Japanese word for festival. So we mounted this event to welcome all Honda owners, regardless of their cars, regardless of their location, their background. So it's really one big celebration of everything Honda. So that's why we call it the Ultimate Honda Collective. Honda Club of the Philippines has been around for more than two decades. So we always expound, of course, our camaraderie, our teamwork, and of course, road responsibility. No? We always espouse proper driving and following of the road rules. Nag-start ako na mag-register sa kanila mga way back 2005 pa po. Bakit ako nag-register noon? Kasi may mga kaibigan tayo na yun, minaya tayo kasi yun nga, meron daw mga dito mga makakatulong sa'yo sa pagbuo ng kotse. Halimbawa sa parts, tapos sa service, tapos yun, nag-start na dun, medyo from stock. Yun po, medyo dandahan na po ng buko. Marami rin po kayong makikilala, mga bagong kaibigan, syempre. Kung 
congratulations for the 21st anniversary of Honda Cup Club Philippines. And uh, for me, this is the first time to join this kind of event. So I'm so surprised there are so many Honda cars and so many Honda fans. <laughs> oh, I really uh, appreciate <laughs> our fan club. Yeah. Calling out all Honda owners, regardless of what you drive, you are all welcome to join the first, the biggest, and the strongest Honda Club in the Philippines, no? HCP. So we'd love to have you, we'd love to grow our family with you, and we'd love to share our member benefits and privileges with you. Please approach us if you want to partner with our uh, biggest organization, Kami Nam Pinakamatagal. Uh, and uh, we continue to grow no? our family with the new models like the eight, uh, 11th generation Civic and the Honda Brio. So, and um, habang dumadami ang mga models ng Honda, lumalaki din yung pamilya ng HD. Perhaps the most fun take from the club's 21st anniversary celebration is Honda Cars Philippines president. Masahiko Nakamura getting a pleasant surprise at how the Japanese brand is so well loved in the country. Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards to push the extremes to race 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 that's when you find the limit that's our ambition so you too can race yours Welcome back. We have more cars for you to know and appreciate as we have our second car review this week. In this edition of Car Review, we check out the Volkswagen Santana GTS 180 MPI SE. Is it a wagon? Is it a hatch? Does it offer much beyond Volkswagen engineering and cachet? Is it a hatchback? Is it a wagon? Does it fall into the subcompact or compact segment? Whatever some believe it is or whatever segment they place it, the Volkswagen Santana GTS is 4,282mm long, 1,706mm wide, and 1,489mm tall, with a 2,603mm long wheelbase. It has 5 doors and can sit 5 and has the design and look that can fit general definitions of either a hatchback or a wagon. Volkswagen takes pride in its German engineering and Teutonic design and Santana GTS certainly manifests both. Those who like the wagon body styling of the Santana GTS will describe it as a classic. Those who don't will call it dated. But what both can agree on is that it's quite functional and practical in look and features, coming as it does with adjustable halogen headlamps, front fog lamps, roof rails, power adjustable outside door mirrors with turn indicators, rear wiper. It also comes with a sunroof. It rolls on 15-inch alloy wheels strapped by 185-60 R15 tires.
the rear door opens up to gain access to the truck with 372 liter capacity, which can increase to 1,255 liters with rear seats folded. The Santana GTS comes with roomy interiors with good shoulder and legroom in the front and rear seats. The seats come in combination leather fabric upholstery with red stitching or piping, also found on the door trims and the dash. The rear seat back folds 60-40 to provide some flexibility for loading luggage and other gear. The D-Type multifunction and tilt-adjustable steering wheel features controls for such things as the audio system. An armrest lies between the front seats. The driver's seat adjusts six ways. Convenience features include power door locks, power windows, air conditioning with automatic climate control in rear vents, front cup holders, bottle holders on the doors, and power outlets. The Santana GTS comes with an audio system with AM, FM radio, plays CD, Bluetooth, aux input, USB, and six speakers. An optional Blaupunk infotainment system features a 7-inch touchscreen display with mirror link for connecting with smartphones. The Santana GTS offers a driving experience usually expected of VW and other brands with German origins or engineering. It has good, solid, and nimble handling on both city streets and highways. There is enough grunt from the 1.5-liter gasoline engine that generates 110 PS and 150 Nm of torque for safe overtaking and driving on hilly terrain. Power and torque are transmitted to the front wheels via a 6-speed automatic transmission. Volkswagen says the AT adapts to one's driving style at any given time, from leisurely cruising to sporty performance, while also taking road conditions into account. The Santana GTS is rated to go from 0 to 100 km per hour in 12.6 seconds and to reach a top speed of 185 km per hour. The Santana also features blue motion technology that shuts down the engine when the car is stationary and automatically restarts it when about to go. It is meant to improve fuel economy but takes some getting used to. The cabin keeps outside noise quite well, while the suspension system with front McPherson struts and semi-independent composite torsion beams in the rear rides small bumps and road imperfections without drama. The brake system uses front ventilated disc and rear drums. The Santana GTS is equipped with cruise control that should come in handy to stay right on the speed limits on the extra sways. It also comes with standard safety features like anti-lock brake system with electronic brake force distribution and brake assist, front and side airbags, Isofix child care seats, as well as three-point seat belts. Other driving assist systems include the electronic stabilization program. Volkswagen Philippines may have just equipped the Santana GTS with enough up-to-date feature and technology to add to its Teutonic heritage and engineering to convince those looking for wagons or hatchbacks to get one. Know more about your car and how to take care of it here on Autopedia. Sometimes your car can have the dreaded O word, and by O we mean overhaul. We'll explain to you in as simple terms as possible what an engine overhaul actually entails and what is done when you overhaul an engine. Overhauling an engine simply means that you have to take the engine, take it all apart, and then replace some parts inside and the parts that are almost always replaced with an overhaul are these things the piston rings these are the first ones to go inside the engine as you notice there's a bit of spring in this so this is what seals the piston to the combustion chamber and over time wear and tear and obviously this thing is operating in hundreds of degrees Celsius environment these tend to fail and not to be as springy no more so the actual part on a normal overhaul engine is just to replace the piston rings, which are these things. There's normally four of them now in a modern engine. And there's, a oil, there's the oil ring land here, which is a bit hard to get out. I need a special pick to get it out. But these are the things that are replaced in a normally overhauled engine. This part is cheap. It's getting to it that's expensive. And the things that you have to take out and the things that gets replaced, that add up to the bill. The primary cause of an engine that needs to be overhauled is number one, old age. By old age, we mean 
150,000, sometimes 200,000 kilometers. And it also depends on the engine. Yes, we have all heard stories of the Toyota that lasted a million miles, the Mercedes-Benz engine that lasted another million miles, or 300,000 kilometers on the original engine on a 1990 Honda. Those are more of the exceptions rather than the norm. Normally, an engine's life here in the Philippines is anywhere from 150,000 to maybe 250,000 if you're lucky. By that time, if it's still running great, good for you. But an overhaul is not out of the question with that age of an engine. So when you overhaul engine, these are all the parts. Actually, this is not all the parts. It's not even all the parts. This is some of the parts of a Subaru engine that we're overhauling. The engine block is not here. It's actually in the machine shop. What adds up to the cost of the overhaul are things like this. When you overhaul the engine, you need new gaskets for, these, for this, new gaskets for that. All the rubber here gets replaced. There, there, rubber seals. Everything gets replaced and this is also a good time to check for wear items like this is an engine mount, if it's already soft or not. This is apparently still in pretty good condition. And then it's also a time for a general cleaning. You clean everything. There's the valve cover, you clean the gunk off the camshafts, you clean the gunk off here. This is the timing chain cover. This one we just freshly cleaned, so this seal has to be replaced as well. So all of the little things do add up. That's what makes an overhaul expensive. How do you know if your car needs an overhaul? The usual classic signs are number one, white smoke coming out of the exhaust. That simply means that the piston ring isn't doing its job anymore. So the oil, which is normally should be here, goes up to the combustion chamber here and then it gets burned. When oil burns, it's usually a white smoke that comes out. So goes out the tail by white smoke. When you pull up the dipstick, white smoke comes out of that one. That's a sure sign that you already need an overhaul. Baleado, it's not idling properly. It's not idling correctly. It's idling pretty rough. The engine is shaking a lot. That's a sign, but not necessarily an overhaul. Overheating is another sign that may or may not be a complete overhaul. There is such a thing as a top overhaul where only the cylinder head part have a compression test done. That's another pretty much sure way to figure out if your car needs an overhaul or not. It may or may not be caused by the piston ring. It could also be caused by the valve is not shutting off, the clearance is off, and then as, among other things, head problems. But at least it eliminates some of the possible things that might cause an overhaul. Don't be scared of the word overhaul. Like I said, it is not a death sentence. It's not a person. An engine can always be rebuilt. It's just a matter of time and money. Car has sentimental value to you, somebody drove it through a flood, you can't part with it, engine needs an overhaul, not a problem. It can always be brought back to its former glory if you want to. Yes, it's stressful, yes, it's annoying, yes, it's a drain on your wallet, but unlike a person going to a hospital, the car can always, always be resuscitated back to life. That's our feature in Autopedia this week. Taking care of your ride has been made easier. And that's Autofocus this week. We hope you have found this edition of your electronic automobile magazine informative as well as entertaining. Check us out on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. On behalf of my dad, Butch Gamboa, this has been your host, Ray Louis Gamboa. Please stay safe and healthy.